and this was their the fundamental basic message and this they all came with so when it comes to Jesus the Quran is very clear the Quran says that Jesus said inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'abudu hadha sirat mustaqim which means Jesus is saying that that verily Allah is my lord and your lord so worship him yeah. that is the straight path and so we're saying this is the message of Jesus even if you see in the Bible, if you're like, for example, the Gospel according to John, yeah. chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus is reported to have said that this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God. He's talking to someone else, you, may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you have sent. Also, you know, you may be aware in the... Moses is reported to said in Exodus chapter 6 and Jesus repeated it in the Gospel according to Matthew where he said hear O Israel Jesus is asked what is the most important commandment according to the Bible and he says the most important commandment is hear O Israel the Lord our God is one is one Lord the Lord the Lord our God is one Lord so we're saying that the, this is the message of all the messengers this idea of Trinity we'd say it's not found in the Bible, not, not only the word, but even the concept. When you look at what the Christians use, it doesn't really match up. That They're saying that the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the Holy Spirit is fully God, but all these are one and they're co-eternal and they're co-equal. It's very, it's, it's impossible to prove. And also the human mind is not something which we accept. So we're saying that the message of Jesus, Moses and Muhammad is that God is one. How does that sound? Um, I think it's fair because there's no, like you said before, there's no empirical evidence on how they how they can co be co-eternal, how can the Lord and the Son and the Holy Spirit be co-eternal. Yeah. I do think that what you're saying is true. Um, um, but from like a Christian worldview, they do say that they're not physical figures, so they would be like um, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In the, the Holy Spirit's not in a physical form. Yeah. They're just saying that all those kind of concepts are part of God and they're part of uh -huh. What they're actually saying, they're, they're saying that, not to misrepresent them, they say that, that God is one in his nature, yeah. but is made up of three persons. And all these three persons are each fully God. Yeah. Uh, Christian scholars, they call something, it's called the, the logical problem of the Trinity. The logical problem of the Trinity is, if you have one person, the Father, which is fully God, you have the Son, which is fully God, and then you have the Holy Spirit, which is fully God. And all these three are separate. Logically, you'd have to say, this means you have three separate gods. When you say that these three are one, you are forced to say either that all of these are part of God, not, equal, not, not fully God, but they're part of God, or that God has various modes. He can be the Father at one moment, but then he can be the Son. Or you have to say there's three gods. Basically, there's, there's no way that a Christian can present evidence or a reasonable uh, reason to say that the Trinity is true. But it's something which they, they will generally go to, it's a mystery, or they will go to, it's um, my personal experience. I, I've had an experience. But we're saying the fundamental, it should be clear, the evidence should be clear. If, if I'm going to be held account on the Day of Judgment and I'm going to be told to go to uh, it's either paradise or hellfire, the message should be clear, the message should be simple. And we're saying this message, like Allah mentioned in Quran, um, chapter 16, verse 36, it says, It says that in every nation we sent a messenger calling the people to worship God alone and to avoid all false worship. This is the basic message. How does that sound? Did it sound more reasonable or...? Yeah, you came up in a reasonable approach. Uh -huh. And I do like, kind of see yeah, like your point of view. Uh -huh. that I don't really acknowledge like, the great kinds of points of views over the religion because I was brought up with a Christian okay. kind of yeah. household. Like, I don't really understand like, other points. Like, you explained it to me. Like, uh -huh. But, yeah, but do you do you understand? Yeah. But do you understand your own concept? Do you like the? I'm not saying you have this belief, but the belief you're brought up in that Jesus is is fully man and fully God. Do you understand that? Um, you know, to an 
Nächste. Because for us, the God, He is the Creator. Man is created. God is completely independent. He doesn't. He's self-sufficient. Whereas man is dependent and sufficient upon God. God is all-knowing, all-powerful. Human beings are limited in their power, limited in their knowledge, etc. So how can one being be both at the same time? So, see the thing is, Allah mentions in Quran, um, he said there's no compulsion in religion. The truth should be clear from error. Then Allah also mentions uh, The messenger, he's only responsible to convey clearly. So we're not here to force you to uh, accept or believe or reject what your forefathers were upon. But you have to be sure, you have to be confident. And then just uh, uh, one more thing concerning Christianity. The concept of that an innocent person bears our sins and had to die for our sins, which is actually the second person of the Trinity who came down and died for our sins. In Islam, we, Islam teaches this is completely inc incorrect. Islam teaches that every person is responsible for their own deeds. All of us have shortcomings, all of us have sins, but because Allah, God, is the most merciful, the most kind, the most forgiving. When we commit a sin, we turn to Him and we seek forgiveness from Him directly. We don't need an innocent person to, to bear our sins for us. How, how does that sound? Reasonable? So that's, that's the basic message of Islam. And this is what the, we believe Jesus, when Jesus was on earth, you know the people, they, they differed concerning Him. Some people, he, he was sent to the children of Israel. Some of them, they accused him of being a false prophet. They accused him of being born out of wedlock. They accused his mother of you know, uh, many bad titles. And they rejected him. Some people, after Jesus was taken up, they took the, the Roman and the Greek beliefs and they made you know, Jesus into a man God and the human sacrifice. And we're saying that the straight path was what Jesus taught was God is one, worship him alone, and he's a messenger. So this is what the last messenger came, the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him, the messenger for all mankind. Do you have any questions or... Can I give you something to read? Do you, do you want me to carry on or it looks like you are in a... I'm kind of in a... Yeah, I have work. No, I, I can... Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I give you something like a, a Quran and in English to read? Okay, yeah, because I, I, I saw you look like you was being in a rush. Let me just get it for you, I'll be back in one moment. Okay, so this is um, a Quran and then some basic leaflets about Islam, who is Jesus, life after death, what is the Quran, who is Muhammad, uh, please take on all of them. Thank you for your time, all the best. If we're here every Saturday, if you have any questions, right, thank you.